Hey everyone, Dom Guccione here, continuing with the series on mobility and specifically myofascial release. You can see we got a different uh, vantage point here today. I'm home and I'm the king of the castle, at least that's what I tell myself. Uh, so the one area we haven't really touched base on as far as myofascial release is the upper body. So we'll do some general tips and discussion on that. It's, uh, it takes a little bit more creativity um, than the lower body, since you actually have to find some different tools and apply pressure differently, it's less likely that you can use your body weight. So we'll just get right into it. Uh, reminder of principles, you don't want to apply any direct pressure to bones or joints. Um, you don't want to feel pain. And as you apply pressure with whatever tool you're using, you want to feel tension gradually release in that muscle or muscle group. So with the upper body, similar to what we talked about with the back, it's helpful sometimes if you can trace along an area of tension without losing your place, so to speak. Um, so what we'll do, so I'll take myself for example here, what some stuff I'm trying to work on. I uh, did a lot of yard work yesterday, specifically clipping hedges that are about 10 feet tall. So I had to climb a ladder. So I'm climbing a ladder, I'm using a tool so I'm feeling a little bit of tension up here in my traps, my shoulders, um, hands definitely because you got to grip that thing when you're when you're using it. Um, so hands, forearms, triceps even a little bit. Um, so I want to get into some demonstrations and different techniques and tools we can use for that. Um, so foam roller you can use for your upper body. We talked about rolling out the traps a little bit with it. Um, could sort of make something happen with your forearms here. If you lie down on your back, you could use it for your tricep. That one actually works really well. Um, let's see, remember this that we used for the quads. Um, if you use the other end of it, that can actually work really well for forearms. So again, you wanna, it's another principle. Um, when we did our legs, and definitely with upper body, with anything, you want to be able to completely relax whatever muscle group that you're working on. So if it's my forearm, I want to completely relax that. And you can basically take this or you could find probably a wooden spoon or a rolling pin in the kitchen, anything with an end. And you're not going to really jab it in there, but you're going to find some of those muscles and find some tension, hold it, move it right along. With something like this, you could even use that technique to, to directly roll it out if that is helpful. You can use this also for your tricep a little bit back here. Could use the softball a little bit selectively for forearms. Again, being careful not to press directly on your elbow, specifically not your funny bone. <laughs> And my personal favorite is this right here, this little question mark hook thing. So you could probably find something like this online somewhere. The reason I like it so much is because it's really easy to do your upper back. So you can take it hand here, hand here, and just sort of like really dig in. So even if it's not this thing exactly, if you could find something that aids you in applying pressure back here in your traps and your shoulder blades. You can even modify it as long as you're able to successfully relax this. You can can work on your deltoids a little bit. Just, you know, light pressure, relieve the tension. You can work it around. You can do your lats underneath your arm here. Again, you gotta gotta be able to relax it. There we go. Uh, so again, very, very much of a crash course on upper body. As mentioned, it requires a lot of creativity, but if you can remember those principles as far as uh, it should not be painful, you don't wanna apply pressure on bones or joints, and ultimately you're trying to train this group of muscles to relax, um, to relieve tension. It could be after a big workout, um, could be after traveling to get stiffness and soreness out of there. But in general, it's a good practice get, to get into for maintenance and, and really, like I said, training your body to relax. 
So for the mobility series recap, we talked about mobility, which is essentially finding movements that work joints through a specific range of motion to help them loosen up a little bit. Uh, we talked about stretching, which is more usually more static um, and intended to help stretch a muscle or group of muscles. And then we talked about myofascial release, which is different techniques with the foam roller or the aid of other tools um, to really get the whole picture of relaxation. Um, so really, really you need to do all three to be successful in this area. Uh, but you know, you gotta start somewhere. So if you, if you think one area is easier for you to get into, um, go back and check out those quick demos and, and try out some stretches. We have pretty much every, um, every area covered as far as body parts, joints, and muscle groups. So I hope you enjoy this. For the next topic we're going to get into is nutrition. So it's not going to be fad diets or, you know, here's how much protein you should eat or anything like that. Uh, just really simple uh, tips and ways to break down, um, you know, find out for yourself what is healthy for you to be eating. And then just some, you know, potentially some techniques, some recipes, and some ways for you to figure out what, what's best for you and what you need for nutrition. So hope you enjoyed it. Please like on Facebook if you like. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.